Hello, welcome to another module of this course uh, microwave integrated circuits. In the previous two modules, we had covered the various uh, techniques for filter synthesis. In two modules back, we had introduced, I had introduced you to the concept of narrow band filters using resonator. And in the last module, uh, we had discussed about uh, image filters. Now, both the narrow band and the image filters as we had seen, they rely on certain set structures. For example, in the narrow band filter case, there were resonators and then for the image filters, there was the concept of unit cells. The desynthesis techniques were very limited. For example, in the narrow band filter case, we could only change some gap, introduce a gap, put it in shunt or in you know and or put a transmission line element in cascade, something like this. And for this image filters, we see that our design is limited to just designing the unit cell. And basically, there were just two types of uh, unit cells that we discussed. One was that constant K and the other was that M derived. But really, there is no way of designing the response. So, in this uh, module, we shall be talking about designing a particular frequency response, how to design a filter that can provide us a particular desired uh, frequency response. So, let us see how, how to do that. Recall we had in, in uh, I had introduced you to the concept of the insertion loss a few modules back. So, L i this insertion loss is given by this relationship. And for say a low pass filter, L i should be high in the should be low in the pass band and high in the stop band. So, if we plot make a plot between L i and omega c and suppose omega c is our cutoff frequency, then it means that the insertion loss should increase to a maximum of 3 dB for frequencies less than omega c and beyond omega c it should increase. So, then this is our pass band and beyond omega c we have our stop band. Now, the technique for this synthesis is based on this insertion loss. Suppose we are given a certain insertion loss what circuit can be realized, can be designed so that a particular insertion loss characteristics is. The procedure is very similar to the procedure that I had described uh, while designing the impedance matching network. Uh, in the impedance matching network, we first had found out uh, a relation for gamma in omega and then we had equated it to a prototype gamma in omega. So, this was our prototype function. So, either it was a binomial or Chebyshev and this was from circuit analysis. So, this was the case for impedance matching. Now, for this filter synthesis also the principle will be the same. We will be given a certain S21 or, uh, one or certain insertion loss transfer function and we will be equating it to a prototype case. Now, we can do it both for binomial and Chebyshev, but I will just show you for the bino, uh, for the uh, I beg your pardon, we, we will be equating this to two prototype functions, one is known as the Butterworth prototype and the other is a Chebyshev prototype. So, let us instead of discussing the theory behind this, let us directly go to an example. Uh, so, let us suppose we are given a second order insertion loss function uh, as shown here. So, suppose 
our 1 upon uh, uh, s uh, suppose uh, we are given uh, a third order I beg your pardon a third order insertion loss function now the butterbot third order insertion loss function prototype is given as this one. Now, this uh, can be equated as suppose say, so for our case we have n equal to 3 and say our input output impedance match required is 1 ohm and say our cutoff frequency is 1 hertz. Now, this is not the usual case say usually you will have z 0 as 50 ohms and omega c some very high some high frequency or various frequencies according to the requirement. Uh, but just for this case uh, first we shall be deriving our prototypes for these ideal values idealized values and then we shall be general finding the transformation or how to transform the circuit. So, that we get whatever impedance matching that we want and whatever cutoff frequency that we want. So, we there are some scaling techniques for that which we shall cover later, but for now we shall be considering our z 0 to be 1 ohm omega c to be uh, it should be actually omega should should be 1 radians per second and this is a third order Butterworth prototype. So, I, I said that the Butterworth prototype is given by this function. So, then S21 square, mind I, I should emphasize that this is the insertion loss Li. Now, S21 square for this particular values of Z0 and omega c will become 1 plus omega raised to 6 because n equal to 3. So, this is our S21 square, and then from here once we know S21 square in the frequency in terms of omega, we can convert it to a Laplace domain that is in the S domain. So, to do that, so we have our S21 square as 1 upon omega 6 and the usual way usually way to or the, the most common way to convert from the, so this is in the Fourier domain. if I have to convert it to the Laplace domain that is in, so this is in omega Fourier domain, but Laplace domain is in terms of S. So, the usual transformation that I use is S is equal to j omega and on substituting this value here, what I get is Now, I should note you should note that this is not always possible that is we cannot always have conversions from the Fourier domain to Laplace domain using this transformation. For example, there are some functions like the unit step function which does not have a Fourier transform, but has a Laplace transform. But anyway we assume that our function our particular transfer function or our particular insertion loss function has both a Fourier transform as well as a Laplace transform. So, using once we do this S21 square comes out to like this and if we assume that our circuit is lossless then we know how to find out S11 square it will be 1 minus S21 whole square and this will be equal to minus S raised to 6 upon 1 minus S raised to 6. Now, this S11 square mod modulus square S11 modulus square can also be written as S11 S times S11 conjugate of S.
So, with this uh, in mind, we can find out what are the we can find out a value for this S11 transfer function. So, to find out S11, so let me just write it once again S11 conjugate S. So, this is what we have found out. If we find out the roots of this denominator, then there are 6 roots and if we select only those roots that provide that are stable, that is those roots who lie in the left half of the S plane, then after taking only those roots, we find out S11S to be equal to Here I can have the numerator can be both positive or negative okay. and we shall see that we will have two different realizations for positive value of numerator and negative value of numerator. So, then uh, from here I can find out z in as equal to and this comes out to be. Now, if I want to realize this z in, then the kind of circuit that I get is like this. this is my z in. Had I taken the negative value in the numerator, then the realization would be In fact, it can be shown that for uh, you know any nth order uh, transfer function for or any nth order Butterworth prototype transfer function that we take, the values of these inductors capacitors whether for the T implementation or the pi implementation provided we take Z0 as 1 ohm and omega C as 1 radians per second. For in any uh, nth order uh, Butterworth prototype function, the values of these inductors and capacitors will be given by this general formula G k where g k are like this one. For example, if we take this prototype, I can call this as g 1, this as g 2, this as g 3. So, it is like this. Now, one advantage of this Butterworth prototype is that uh, it automatically gives you uh, at the output impedance as we saw for example, whether for the T equivalent or the pi equivalent, we saw that the output impedance is 1 ohm. So, that is also equal to Z0. So, in other words these butter pro what prototype functions are auto matched, but if we you know we can have a similar implementation for the Chebyshev function as well, uh, Chebyshev prototype function as well and there we will observe that, that at the output we do not get a 1 ohm impedance. So, the outputs are not matched and so some kind of matching structures have to be present at the output to achieve this. 
at the beginning I had said that uh, we can do a transformation from uh, this low pass to high pass prototypes. So, if we uh, if we go to the slides on the monitor, uh, these are some of the ways we can do it actually. Uh, so, this is our uh, low pass prototype whether pi or so in this case we have a pi equivalent. Uh, now, suppose we want to achieve uh, this was the prototype with 1 ohm value of z 0 and 1 radian per second as w c. Now, how to go from here to this circuit where the cutoff frequency is no longer 1 radian per second and the input and output matching impedances are no longer equal to 50 ohms <coughs> uh, are no longer equal to 1 ohms I beg your pardon. So, the transformation so for example, this G 1, G 2, G 3 are the prototypes with Z 0 equal to 1 ohm and omega c equal to 1 radian per second. Then say for any arbitrary value of Z 0 and omega c the values of to which these G k should be scaled is given by this equation. For example, if GK was the prototype uh, inductance, then it should be scaled to a value LK dash given by this equation. And similarly, if GK was a capacitance value, then it should also be scaled according to this value. Now, similar to this low pass to low pass transformation, we can use these prototypes to also achieve low pass to high pass transformation. In that case, the inductances will be converted to capacitances and capacitances will be converted to inductances as given by this value. So, here g k are the low pass prototypes and c k are the final values in for the high pass prototype with certain z 0 and omega c. They need not be equal to 1 ohm and omega 1 radians per second. So, here these formulas directly scale from the low pass prototype to the final high pass filter circuit without going to any high pass prototype structure. Similarly, we can also transform from uh, so here this is a graph this is this, uh, this shows the transformation these are the low pass prototypes and after applying those formulas that I showed in the previous slide we will get a circuit like this. This is our final high pass circuit. <coughs> Now, similar to this transformation from low pass to high pass, we can also have a transformation from low pass to band pass. Now, the fractional frequency of a fractional bandwidth of a band pass filter is given by this equation where the omega 1 and omega 2 are the 3 dB frequencies. Then as we know for band pass implementation, we need a series resonator in series or a shunt resonator in shunt. Now, in our low pass prototype, we had seen that we have capacitances in shunt and inductances in series. So, to realize a band pass equivalent, these capacitances should convert to a shunt combination of L and C and these inductances should convert to a series combination of L and C. And the conversion formula is given by this equation. So, G k is our low pass prototype. If that is a inductor, then that will be converted to a series combination of L and C given by this equation. If G k is a capacitor in the low pass prototype, then it will be converted to a shunt combination of L and C given by this equation. So, this was our low pass prototype, this becomes our band pass prototype. And similarly, if we want to convert from low pass to a band stop, then we know that these shunt capacitances should be converted to a series combination of L and C and these series inductances in the low pass prototype should be converted to a shunt combination of L and C. So, if they, we have an inductor L, then it will be converted if G k represents an inductor in the low pass prototype then it will be converted to a shunt combination of L and C whose values are given by this equation. And if G k represents a capacitor, a shunt capacitor in the low pass prototype, then it will be converted to a series combination of L and C whose values are given by this equation. 
So, this was our low pass prototype and this was our this is our band stop prototype. So, in summary in this uh, lecture we discussed the various uh, filter synthesis we discussed not various only a single uh, filter synthesis technique which is called the insertion loss uh, technique. Now, the image filter techniques that we had discussed in the previous class they are also to some extent synthesis, but then as I mentioned that our design is limited only to the unit cell design. In the case of these synthesis techniques as we studied in this module, here we are we have been given the complete filter characteristics and we design the filter as a whole without relying on unit cells. This, uh, this is the most common uh, method that is used for synthesis of filters nowadays, but uh, we also see a problem in this so what we have discussed so far. And the problem is that we have been uh, talking about uh, we have been talking about lumped elements, but uh, as we know we have to deal with distributed elements. So, how can we realize distributed elements? Uh, from these lumped prototypes that we have developed. All the circuits as you saw, saw whether the low pass, high pass, band pass or band stop, they have all were described in terms of lumped elements. So, we have to have a method for converting this lumped elements to distributed elements. At the same time we know that lumped elements do not have an exact distributed L equivalent. So, then uh, we apply a technique called commensurate filter design. This method first you have to we have to we assume that we have already been given our lumped element. Uh, so, our lumped element model has been given. Now, let us go back to the shorted and open lines that we had discussed earlier. Consider a shorted line, this is a short. Now, for this shorted line we know z in And for a open line, we know y in suppose we define a variable omega given by tan beta l, and the length of this element is say lambda r upon 2 where lambda r corresponds to certain frequency omega r, and then this can be written as and our z in for this shorted line simply becomes j sigma and this y in becomes j y 0 sigma and z in I beg your pardon becomes equal to j sigma z 0. Here yes, sigma is a new variable in place of s. Now, from the s domain we have gone to the capital sigma domain and you see that this shorted line if we keep this length constant to some value lambda r upon 4 then this shorted line behaves exactly like an inductor and this open line this behaves exactly like a capacitor. So, that is this commensurate filter design the basic principle of this commensurate, commensurate filter design that if in our entire system the lengths of certain elements like the short and open, if we keep all the lengths of the short and open elements same, 
then we can we can replace the inductors and capacitors that we found using those synthesis techniques that we described just now with these short and open lines. So, for example, let us see uh, we had say a low pass prototype. If this was our low pass prototype, then I can replace this inductor by a shorted line like this and this capacitor with an open line like this. I choose the value of the characteristic impedance equal to L1 and I choose the characteristic impedance of this one also equal to 1 by C2. So, then and if I keep the lengths of these shorted and open lines the same, then it is just like implementing the lumped element component. If we see uh, for a special case, if I choose uh, if I choose my omega r to be equal to twice of omega c, if I choose this, I can choose this, but if that is not necessary, then omega c equal to 1 implies capital omega c also equal to 1. In the book by POSA, this particular relation is taken and that is why omega c equal to 1 corresponds to capital omega c also equal to 1. So, in that case, what we will see is suppose this is the kind of insertion loss that we wanted. In the, in the circuit realized using these shorted and open transmission line or this commensurate filter, we will uh, get, we might uh, get a circuit which is like this. So, this is for the commensurate filter. and this line is for lumped element filter. Now, how still what the problem that we will face is in realizing these shorted and open transmission lines in series. We saw that we have a problem of realizing a shorted line in series. To get over this problem, uh, there, is, there is a certain identity known as Kuroda's identity. So, if we go to this uh, to the slides on the monitor, a Kuroda in the book by Posa, there are four Kuroda's identity which have been shown of which two are of interest. One is here, if we have a capacitance, of course, these capacitances and inductors that are shown here are all in terms of the transmission lines. Either so, if this is a capacitance, then it implies an open circuit line. If this is an inductance, then it, it implies a shorted transmission line. The, sh the size of the length of these shorted and, in, and uh, open line, open transmission lines are the same. And we further have a new element called unit element represented by this Ue, which has an electrical length same as these L and C. Now, if we have this structure, then this is equivalent to this 
and this circuit is equivalent to this. What we see here is that a series inductors both these transformations a series inductor can be converted to a shunt capacitor. As we know realization of a shunt capacitor represented by open circuit line is easier than the realization of this inductor represented by a uh, represented by a shorted transmission line in series. Hence these uh, identities come in handy. So, commens in summary commensurate filters are frequently used for synthesizing uh, various or for realizing the lumped element equivalents in terms of distributed uh, circuit elements. So, in overall in the past few modules we had extensively discussed the various aspects of uh, filter design. We first started with narrow band filter design then moved on to image filter design and finally to, finally to this broadband and email filter synthesis technique. Thank you. Thank you.